So we've got to walk in some seasons of life realizing that some friendships might not live and some ambitions might not live and some desires might not live and some expectations might not live and some preferences might not live. But our challenge in these seasons is trusting that what you gain in resurrection is far greater than what you lose in crucifixion. So stop trying to perform CPR on something that God wants to stay buried. Purpose will require you and I adopting and accepting the principle that Dr. Henry Cloud calls necessary endings. He says, Entrances into new seasons must be preceded by exits out of old ones. He says, if you are unwilling to say goodbye to something old, you will be unable to say hello to something new. Are y'all following me? He says, a life skill that everybody needs to develop is the skill of saying goodbye. Come on. Spring can't begin unless winter ends. Summer can't begin unless spring ends. Fall can't begin unless summer ends. Come on. Winter can't begin unless fall ends. And there are some seasons that can't begin because there are other seasons we won't end. Talk back to me. Some advancement family requires elimination and purpose will put, will require you and I putting some things in the grave. So we've got to walk in some seasons of life realizing that some friendships might not live and some ambitions might not live and some desires might not live, and some expectations might not live, and some preferences might not live. But our challenge in these seasons is trusting that what you gain in resurrection is far greater than what you lose in crucifixion. So stop trying to perform CPR on something that God wants to stay buried if you will go ahead and experience the crucifixion, the sooner you let him crucify it, the sooner he's getting ready to resurrect it. And what comes after resurrection is always greater and better than what you lost in crucifixion. And I wanna talk to anybody that feels like something in your life is dying. Maybe a relationship is dying. Maybe pride is dying. Maybe your dream is dying. I came to tell you, give them three days. Somebody missed it. Just hang in there Friday night. Hang in there Saturday. Hang in there Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, God. Am I making sense? Jesus is entering Jerusalem for this annual celebration called Passover. Everybody say Passover. Passover. Okay, everybody that grew up in a church that had some kind of charismatic or continuationist or Pentecostal or holiness leanings, I want you to say Passover like you're about to quicken. Come on, say Passover. <laughs> Passover. He's celebrating a, a feast called Passover. Passover was a time of celebration for God's preservation of his people from a plague in Egypt. It's captured in Exodus chapter 12, where God tells Moses to tell the leaders of homes, find an innocent lamb without a defect. I want you to slay the lamb, then take the blood from the lamb, put it on the tops and on the sides of the doorposts. And when the plague comes by, that's going to wipe out the firstborn of everything in Egypt. He says, when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over 
that house. And I don't know if you're catching the revelation here, but it means that the plague may have been in their city. It may have been in their neighborhood. It may have been on their street. It may have got to every house before theirs. But when the when he saw the blood, he passed over that house. And you didn't have a literal Passover, but all of us have had a metaphorical Passover. Because the truth of the matter is there is something that could have and should have hit your life. But because you're covered in the blood of a lamb named Jesus, there's some stuff that pass over you. This is why every now and then, you ought to give God a Passover praise. Yes. See, all the perfect people be quiet. This right here is not for the perfect people. This right here is for people that's made some mistakes, that's made some missteps, that says some stuff should have happened to me, that didn't happen to me, he made it Passover. So when I think of the goodness of Jesus, we got to go, but can somebody just be honest and say, I'm not praising God because I've been good to him. People looking at you, calling you a hypocrite and you're like, I'm not praising God because I've been good to him. I'm praising God because he's been good to me. Passover. Be, be, be seated, please. Passover. Because of the blood of an innocent lamb without defect. That blood, that lamb is Jesus. And the shedding, the Bible says that it's Leviticus 17, 11, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So the, the, the blood symbolizes a life has already been given. <sighs> Y'all miss it. <laughs> so don't take this life because a life's already been given. Don't imprison them. The sentence has already been served. You can't recharge them for the same crime because somebody did their time for them. Yeah, yeah, Passover being, being a powerful picture of what we call in Christian spaces, grace and mercy. What's grace, Darius? Undeserved favor. Grace is when God give you what you don't deserve. That's grace. But then you got mercy. Whereas grace is when God give you what you don't deserve. Mercy, I'm gonna see if I can get a shouter here. Mercy is when God doesn't give you what you do deserve. It is when God interrupts the law of sowing and reaping. Y'all aren't talk. I'm, I'm looking for honest people that will say, I hadn't always sowed good seed. I hadn't always made good choices. And there's a harvest that could have came back on me, that didn't come back on me. It was because mercy interrupted. The law of sowing and reaping. 